Last day, last day. What y'all want to talk about? Well, what are some of the biggest things that you're looking to see on Saturday? Oh man, uh, just a good competitive game, and, and really just kind of, you know, we've got some guys that that have had really good springs, and I'd like to see them kind of carry that over into that environment. We've got a lot of uh, guys that are, that have really had to play much bigger roles this spring than maybe they have in the past, and uh, and then you split the team. Uh, it, 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 with, with 20 scholarship guys unavailable, it gets thin quick. So it's going to be fun, man. I, I just want to see them compete. I want to see some of these guys that that maybe haven't played as many reps and maybe not aren't going to have to play a ton of reps in the season. I want to see how they respond. I want to see how they handle it. Um, you know, so you know, just see them, see them do, take and execute what we've done this spring. Not have a bunch of missed assignments. Uh, guys that haven't had much opportunity that are going to get some opportunity, show that they know what to do. And, um, you know, just see them go have some fun and put on a good show for the crowd. And hopefully see a huge crowd there. You know, we're going to have a ton of recruits there. Uh, you know, we got a lot of former players coming back. we got a lot of families that are going to be here. This is a huge deal for these players. And, you know, that's one of the reasons that we went ahead and split the team, even though we're thin in some areas because that's the only way you can create. I mean, it's just such a rare opportunity that you get a chance to really create a game environment, you know, in practice. Uh, so this is a, a great opportunity for our quarterbacks. It's a great opportunity for some of the D linemen, especially these offensive linemen, you know, every position, receivers, young DBs. I mean, for a guy like, you know, um, Pride and, and Coble to be able to go out there in this environment and. And, and go play uh, a guy like Spectre who really hasn't played in front of a crowd in a long time. Uh, you know, some of our young specialists, uh, you know, uh, and then again, some of those D linemen. I mean, it's a lot of reps coming for Kate Park, a lot of reps coming for Peyton Page, a lot of reps coming for some of them young linemen, and uh, it'll, be, uh, it'll be fun. I heard that Mickey's going to coach the white team. Who's coaching the orange and the uh... Uh, Mike Reed is is coaching. He is the orange team, and Kyle Richardson is the uh, white team. So, and that's always fun. This is one of the one of my funnest days because, you know, we, we I'll, I, I'll pick the head coaches, split the staff, and then um, they have to split their position, and they don't have a clue who who they're coaching. So they have to split it as evenly as they possibly can, which is. It was a very interesting uh, process, and then we kind of look at it and make sure it's all we all agree and there's no trades or anything. I think we only had one trade this year that we had to kind of talk through. And then, but once all that separated, and you got two offenses and two defenses. You know, then we kind of bring the head coaches up. And everybody accused uh, Reed of having a loaded coin because you know you have the first coin toss, two out of three. He won the coin to coin toss, so then he gets first pick. So that means he can choose either offense or he can choose either defense. And it's always interesting to see who they're going to pick. And then I always make it well known who didn't get picked. Uh, <laughs> and so he picked one of the defenses. So by default, Kyle Richardson gets the other defense. So I made sure they knew they were the default defense. <laughs> and oh, by the way, he didn't pick either offense either. So now it's Kyle's, since he got first pick and chose the defense, Kyle gets the first pick of an offense. So he picked his offense, and uh, so by default, Reed got the other offense, and then we do another coin toss for the specialist. Reed won again, uh, so he got first pick of the specialist. Then we do another coin toss for orange or white. Reed won again. Should have gone to Vegas today, and, uh, <laughs> and he so he chose orange. So, uh, and then we kind of uh, reveal everything to the team. And the team meeting. that's always fun. It's always a fun day, and then. This is a big. This day is a is a is a, a light day for us, and that we, we we come out and we get some indie done, a little little bit of group work, and then the last two periods we coach the team on how, you know, what the expectations are for the summer. Uh, you know, because these guys, when we do, you know, skills and drills is a big part of our development in the summer, and that's got to be player led. Uh, so uh, we kind of coach them up on again what the expectations are, we'll make sure the leaders understand you know, what they need to do. And then and then we split the teams and they get, you know, I get out of the way and they get ready to play. They get their offense, defense, kicking game ready to go. And and, uh, and then we kind of come together. So this is, uh, it's always a, a good day. So a lot of fun and 
it should be a great day. I think it's going to be a beautiful day in the Valley. Uh, and again, hopefully we have a we have a great crowd and a good competitive game. Last year was a, was a was a great game. That was a turned out to be a heck of a game uh, right there at the end. So it'll be will, fun. Will Brandon call offense plays for both teams? Or will Kyle no, call for no. His? Kyle will call for one team. Uh, Street will call for one team. Mitchell will call for one team. West will call for another yeah. team. I think that's always good too. You know, to just challenge your staff in a different way. That's always a lot of fun. Uh, and then we're. A little thin on a couple because Artavis has to he has to he has to be in a wedding uh, that has been on the books for a long time. So so I'm gonna have Bo and EJ coaching the receivers on one team. But Bo Bo's not gonna be able to play. He's, he'll probably be able to play next week, uh, but he's still not quite ready with his hammy. And then EJ, so they're gonna be the receivers coaches. Davis Allen will coach the tight ends of one team. Kobe and uh, Spiller will have backs on one team. Kobe and Ship will have the backs on the other team. Uh, so. Everybody's got a job to do. Everybody in the whole building is split up. You're either white or orange. And uh, you know we'll have some accountability points on the line for the winner. So it'll be fun. Will it be hard keeping Christian Wilkins out of things? That's going to be, so that's my next objective, which will be really interesting. So now tonight I've got to call Christian. I have to text him the orange team and the white team. And then he's got to, he gets first pick. Right. So, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see who he picks. It'll be interesting. And then uh, and then Austin gets the default, whoever Christian doesn't pick. So that'll be that'll be fun as well. And I think I think uh, Tim Bure told me a stat today. Uh, leave it to Tim Bure. We're doing a pregame with a stat. He said if Christian Wilkins <laughs> loses this game, he will have as many losses in the spring game as he had in his entire career <laughs> at Clemson. <laughs> so I'm wow. sure that's a stat he wants to avoid. <laughs> You say one of the players got traded? Yeah, we had to make a trade. You know, once we started talking through it and going through it, you know, we realized, okay, well, because there's a, you know, a couple of guys, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna get them their work and then limit them a little bit. So, so we had one little trade. Uh, but other than that, it was they did a really nice job of separating them. It's pretty even. So how About does as even as work? How does that work though? We like just, we just amongst boys and friends at that time and we're just talking it through and yeah. everybody good with this because at that point nobody knows who they have nobody knows who they're coaching we're just it's just two defenses and two offenses all right are they are these two defenses good and uh once i kind of talked through a couple things then they decided they wanted to make one little trade there but other than that it was it was all good Phil Moffa play for both teams or no absolutely not <laughs> uh Moffa's on one team and uh hey Y'all gonna learn who uh, Dominique Thomas is, and yes. Kevin McNeil, and Y Seegers, and Tristan Rigby. You'll hear. You'll, you'll be trying to figure out who some of these guys are. You're gonna be looking looking through your roster. Uh, that'll be fun. Coach Richardson said last week that y'all lost confidence in the passing game last season. You feel like you've gotten that back? Yeah, I mean not fully yet because we don't have everybody out here. But you know, it's it's hard to be confident when when your best players aren't out there. You know, it's just it is what it is. And then. Uh, you know, so we 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 had forgot how to how to throw and catch around here, but we got to we just it, we had to grow through some some tough challenges last year. Again, last what three plus games with seven scholarship receivers out, and pretty much every game, you know, you never knew who was going to be out there. It was just a it was an unbelievably challenging year. That's why when it's all said and done, and you really kind of step back and remove yourself from the, the fray of it, and you really evaluate that team and that season, unbelievable. Uh, that that team overachieved. There's no question. That team had no business winning ten games, uh, and and not only won ten games, but were in it in every game. Uh, you know, so, but that's the heart. That's the belief, and uh, you know, there's a lot of silver linings that come with it too. I mean, if you'd have told me Bo and Dakari were going to start most of the games last year or a good portion of the games, I'd have said, well, something bad has happened, and something bad happened. Uh, you know, if you told me Will Sweeney was going to start three games in the slot, I'd have dang sure said something bad happened. <laughs> uh, if you'd have told me that we were going to have three different centers and seven offensive linemen, I mean, it was crazy. And most of it was one side of the ball. And we were fortunate there because defensively we were able to kind of keep us keep us in some games and give us a chance. And then we had to get creative. It forced the coaches to have to really be creative uh, because, you know, we had to – we couldn't just – stick with a plan you know we had to really create and find ways to get a first down uh and then we had to really coach in a way that we haven't had a chance to coach in a while and the struggle makes you stronger that's what i love about dj man i mean he's got some battle wounds he's scarred up uh he's 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 a stronger more mature 
better version of himself than we've ever seen. Uh, and, and that's going to serve us well. And we're going to be a team that's, that, that I think has a, a deeper appreciation of what it looks like, what it takes. And, uh, you know, I think that team last year really reset the appreciation on just winning. I mean, I told you all, I think that, that locker room in, in Orlando might be the best locker room I've ever been in, uh, you know. And so just uh, there's a lot of silver linings that come from last year. You know, a guy like Marcus Tate and, and all the experience that he got, certainly the experience that DJ got, uh, how the challenges that he had to go through and grow, never pointed the finger, never blamed, never made excuses, uh, just, just kept his head down and just kept plowing forward. Um, the experience that Bo and Dakari got, you know, the uh, experience of Brenny, you know, just being able to get a little taste of it, uh, you know, it is exciting. Uh, the experience of a guy like Nate, uh, you know, what we were able to do with, with, with uh, uh, Trenton last year, you know, I think is he's just going to be at another level. Barrett Carter, I mean, there's so many silver linings that came from the season. And uh, hopefully once we get back going in August, you know, we get back to being a complete team, uh, we'll have a chance to, to you know, have all the confidence we need in every area that we need to win the game. With all the guys that were out this spring, was this the most challenging spring for you guys as coaching staff? Uh, I don't know if challenging. I mean, it was it was uh, probably the thinnest we've ever had. Um, and it's crazy. I mean, like, you know, the 20 guys that are out for spring, you know, two are new injuries. Um, and that that's Adam Randall and um, uh, Jay Lou. You know, Jay, Jaden dove in, in shorts and, you know, he hurt his shoulder in high school, but he came, went and came down, and that's how he hurt his shoulder. And then, uh, you know, just a crazy deal. Adam, I mean, he stuck his foot in the ground. And uh, that's pretty much how I, all these ACLs happen that I've seen in my career. It's usually, most of the time, it's non-contact, you know? And it's like, like wow. Uh, so, but the good news is Adam is, is it's best case scenario. Is, you know, a lot of these ACLs, there's multiple ligament damage or MCL or whatever, meniscus. And um, his was completely isolated, very clean, no swelling at all. So that's why, that, that's why they can go ahead and do surgery in the morning. So, you know, he, he'll be back. I won't cut his leg off. He's, he's still gonna have a great freshman year. He's, he's gonna be just fine. He's just gotta redirect uh, his focus in the summer than what he would have been. You know, he's gotta really grind and, and, and get through the rehab. Uh, but he had a great spring. He's going to be very confident from that, and, and uh, you know, he'll be he'll be back, and ready to go. And then Jaden Lucas will be ready to go. Everybody else is is all postseason stuff. So, I mean, and they're all doing great. Uh, and then we got a couple guys out. You know, we, I, I think I told you we had a couple guys with mono. Uh, you know, we had a you know Bo tweaked his hamstring. Nothing major there. Again, if we were next week, he'd be ready to go. Tucker rolled his ankle, uh, but all the guys uh, is all postseason surgery stuff and uh, they're all doing really well so you, do you think there's a possibility Adams to be ready for you know late fall camp? I think anything's possible I mean you know I think he'll I don't know if he'll be ready for fall camp but he'll be back in the season at some point I mean Amari tore his ACL almost a week apart and played in the first game uh, y'all were here Tyson Pumachan tore his Achilles uh, in the spring game and was ready the first game. So, I mean, anything's possible, but you don't put any expectations on it because it, everybody's different. I mean, he's back when he's back. If he's back for camp, great. If he's back in September, great. If he's back in October, great. But he's going to be back. Uh, and he'll, like I said, he'll still have a great freshman year. There's no doubt about that in my mind. What did you learn about the inside linebackers this spring? Uh, very athletic, very fast, and very focused group. Uh, it's been fun moving Trenton in there. And, and watching him, you know, mature in a different role. Uh, you know, I love, I love what I see. We, it was good to get Sergio back the, the second half, so he was able to get some work these last six practices. Uh, but man, I love what I, I see out of out of Trotter and um, you know, Levante McGuire. Man, McGuire is just like a different dude. I mean, his he's got some swagger. He's playing fast. He's just it's just a very knowledgeable group. You know, and even though Trotter is just going to be a sophomore, he's one of the, I mean, that guy's off the charts, you know, football IQ and just instincts for the game. And then Barrett Carter, he's as good a football player as in this entire team. He could probably play, he could probably play, he could play corner, safety, 
Sam, Mike, Will, running back. I mean, it, this guy is a very, very unique football player. I mean, he's a he's a, a great, great young prospect. So um, we're really excited about it. I think we're going to be very athletic there. We're going to be very knowledgeable there. We're going to be fast. And then when we get these three dudes coming in here, you know, Wood as and, and, and Kobe and, and uh, uh, TJ and Dudley, uh, we'll have the depth that we need uh, to kind of backfill that group. But, you know, those those first six guys are, are, are going to be ready to play uh, when it comes bright light time. Yeah, but chronologically speaking, this is probably one of the youngest coaching staff you've had in a while. I guess what kind of dynamic do you think they've had? How do you see that kind of play? Is it? Is it really? I didn't even think about that. Uh, hmm. Uh, Pretty young. Got rid of some of them old heads. Uh, <laughs> that's good. Bunch of old geezers. Uh, we got rid of them, all them guys. Uh, I hadn't really thought about that. So we process that. I guess Wes is younger than Brent, Nick, and Todd. About the same, I don't know. Maybe Todd might be a little younger. Uh, uh, who else we bring in here? Robbie's probably the scale you have. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Robbie's, Robbie's completely bro broken the scale on that. That's an outlier. <laughs> yeah, that's an outlier. Yeah, throw that one out. All right, yeah, Thomas, Thomas is, he's got a little ways to go there. Uh, Kay Rich uh, for Tony. They're about the same. I think they're about the same. Uh, and then who am I missing? Anybody else? Uh, that's about it. I don't know. It's been it's been good. You know, they're all very experienced guys and seasoned football people, regardless of you know if they're 38 or 48. I mean, you know, they're they're all very prepared and and uh, well equipped to do the job that we've asked them to do. And it's been fun. I mean, this has been. That's, this, that's been as much fun as anything, putting the team together, but also getting the, the staff to settle out. And we've got some really, really good off-field um, support people that have joined us as well. That's, that's, that's been a, a great additions for us. So um, it's good. I mean, I think they're all ready to go do a great job. Is there any uh, separation between Aiden and BT at punter? Uh, Pretty close. Yeah, honestly, that's the only question I got on this team. Uh, if, you, if you ask me what question marks you have on the team, I got one question mark coming out of spring, and, and that is who's running out there first at punter. So to be determined. Uh, we'll see. Other than that, I mean, I think I think I don't really have any question marks. I think we've got I think we've got the right right people. We got a bunch of great kids. Uh, I'm, I'm loving our our exit meetings that are, that's going on right now, and, and uh, just the insight. From this group, and some I always really look forward to. This is a, this is a, it's a fun team, man. This is a, a close group. They got, I think, all the intangibles <coughs> that great teams need to have. And I think uh, come August, when we finally get everybody back together, I think we'll have the type of depth that you need to have. Yeah, well, this is a little random, but when you look around college football and you see collectives popping up with NIL, just what do you think about collectives and is this something neat? Yeah, I don't think anything about it. I just focus on coaching my team. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I think I think that's a uh, whatever's out there. It's a natural progression that you know, you know, one school has a good chef, the other school is going to get a good chef. One school has uh, three street coaches, the other school is going to eventually get three street coaches. You know, so um, you know, I think that. Probably will be some announcements, you know, on, on the Clemson end. I mean, again, we can't, we we're, we're limited in that area, uh, but you know what can we can do? But uh, I think some of the things that I've heard out there, I think, are, are positive and and would fit the purpose of our program and, and fit within, uh, you know, something that everybody can participate in, you know, that type of thing. But you know, hey, I mean, these guys, like I said, many times, if they've got an opportunity to do something on their own on their time. Good for them. Uh, my focus is what's going on when they're when they show up, you know, uh, and preparing our team and uh, all that other stuff, you know, and then making sure they they they've got the resources that they need to help navigate, you know, that those external things. Just kind of another kind of random question, but you know, thinking back to your time at Alabama, what were your first impressions of William McCorvey and? 
you know, how, what kind of impact these wedges had on me? Oh, I didn't like Woody. Uh, <laughs> I didn't like Woody. Um, we laugh about that all the time. Uh, and it's just crazy how, you know, you just, and it was simply, you know, Tommy, and those of you who've been around Tommy, Tommy was, was 100 miles an hour. He was wide open, especially as a receiver coach. You know, he, he was my first receiver coach, and that's all I had. I'd just spent a year with him, and he really, and, and I knew he liked me, and I had, I had advanced, and I, I, I kind of, I was in position. I was like, man, I'm going to really get a chance to compete. He, I played in a game. He, he took me to a couple games, took me to the bowl game. Uh, it wasn't like it is now where, you know, everybody goes. I mean, it was it was different in those days. And, and so I felt good. And then all of a sudden you come back from the bowl game and all the coaches are gone. And well, and as a walk on, uh, going in my sophomore year, I mean, you start over. Like you're back at the bottom. And, and that was a very tough thing for me. And, and uh, that spring of 90, my red shirt sophomore year, you know, Coach McCorvey came in. He's the new receiver coach from, from Clemson. And if you know Woody, he's not a man of many words. And, you know, but when he says something, you, you better listen. But so I went from Tommy, who's 100 miles an hour, to Woody, who didn't even really know my name. Or I didn't think he knew my name. And I, did, I went from playing in a game, I didn't even get a rep in the spring game. And I was so mad. I was, you know, young and immature and angry and mad. And, and you know, my mom's there, my grandmother's there, you know. And I don't even get in the spring game. Like, that's why to this day, somebody's getting fired if everybody doesn't get in the spring game. All right? Like, everybody gets in that spring game, one way or another. You know, there's a grandmother up there, and they're going to see everybody gets in that spring game. But I didn't get in the spring game. And I remember after that game, I was so down. And I was frustrated. And he really, you know, he hadn't said my name all spring. And so I just, I just didn't think he liked me. And, you know, there were some guys that were getting opportunities that I had already moved in front of, but I, because I wasn't on scout, I, had, I was back at the bottom. And, um, and so literally I thought about leaving. Um, I, I was, you know, going to hit the portal uh, <laughs> uh, that summer. I mean, literally I was out. But back in those days, you know, you had to go down to play. And I, I was at a point in my career then where I went from, all right, I just want to make the team. I just want to get on the team. And then it was like, all right, I just want to, Somebody maybe learns my name, and then all of a sudden I'm playing. I play in a game, and and then I'm like, okay, I got a little chance here, and and then I I go right back to the bottom. I don't get in the spring game, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna transfer. Man, I'm going to North Alabama. I'm going, and I and I, I was at that point where I really wanted to play. Like I knew I could play, and I really wanted to play. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go North Alabama Division Two, and I'm gonna be the man. You know, that's <laughs> kind of where I was. Heck with all this. And but what had happened to me, all my priorities were out of whack. You know, everything that I had wanted to do in life, I had gotten away from. You know, and now all of a sudden it was about football, it was about me, it was about my opportunity, I'm not getting to play. And instead of getting my degree, you know, finish, I wanted to go to med school, I was in pre-med, you know, uh, I had, I was so focused on the wrong things. And one of, an old teammate of mine at North Alabama, uh, I remember calling him, and I'm like, man, I'm coming. He's telling me about it, and he's like, he's exactly where he said, are you crazy? This is what he said. And, I mean, he's one of the you know, receivers in the team, and he and I had gone to high school together. He's like, he's like, man, dude, you're at Alabama. Are you lost your mind? You're getting to do this and this. And I'm like, well, I don't care. I want to play. And this guy don't like me, and blah, 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 blah. And then my mom, my brother, Tracy, Mayor Hayes from Pelham, they talked me off the ledge. You know, my mom sent me this. I still got, she sent me this poem, Don't Quit. You know, I still got email of that poem, Don't Quit. You know, life's trudging, seems uphill. You know, <laughs> it's like, you just never know what's coming. Uh, and if you don't quit. And so, but I just finally, and I finally just kind of had a reset with my faith and a reset with everything like, okay. And I got my attitude right. My attitude stunk. And I just completely changed my mind and I said, you know what? I've made a lot of friends. I've already achieved more than I ever dreamed I could have. I mean, it was a dream just to get on the team and dream of getting a game. I mean, I mean, I hear it, I'm in Alabama and I'm like, this is my dream. Nobody in my family ever had an opportunity to do something like this. And I said, all right, 
if this is the way it's going to be, I'm going to be the best scout team receiver in the history of scout team receivers. I'm going to be the best. That Bill Oliver is going to, he's going to brag on me in every staff meeting because that's how, you know, so, and that's how, that was my mindset. So I changed my mentality. I changed my mindset and I quit worrying about things I didn't control. I didn't control Woody. I didn't control any of that stuff. Whether you know, I just so I just got focused on what I did control. That was my preparation, my effort, you know, my faith, my priorities, and man, I just was freed up. And I go to camp that year, and next thing you know, uh, first two games, two receivers got hurt. Next thing you know, game four, uh, got to dress. You know, didn't get to play. Woody ain't talked to me yet. Next thing you know, uh, I'm at Tuesday practice. And Woody calls me over. I, I'm telling you, he hasn't said a word to me since he got there January of 90. Not one word. And he, he'll say that's bull crap, and that's the truth, all right? And, uh, <laughs> and you know, he I remember he had just turned 40. He had just turned 40 October of that year. And, uh, and he calls me over on a Tuesday practice. He said, hey, you got a white jersey. And I said, yeah, I thought I didn't know. I thought I was in trouble or something. And he goes, get in there and put it on. I'm gonna give you a chance today. If you do good, you play in Saturday. That's exactly classic Woody. Exactly what he said. And I went in, I put on my jersey, I came to practice. I had an unbelievable practice. When I got back out there, it was one-on-one -on -one time. And he kept his word. I played that Saturday and I never didn't play again. And I went on and later that year and got a scholarship and and then he became like a father to me. You know, he became one of the greatest leaders and mentors that I've ever been around. And, uh, but, you know, it was just a, in, in the beginning, I don't know who asked me the question, it was a long answer, but in the beginning, <laughs> I didn't like him, you know, because I didn't think he liked me and I didn't think he was giving me a chance and, and you know, it was, you know, bad attitude uh, and I didn't think he was paying attention, but, in, but he was paying attention. And you know, that's why I tell people all the time, you never know who's watching. So just be great at whatever you're doing and prepare. You better prepare though. All right, because you don't ever know when the opportunity is going to come. And again, here we are now. What is how many years is that? 1990. What is 32. that? 20, there you go. 32 years later, you know, he and I we're thick as thieves. <laughs> it's crazy. Anybody else? If you'd have told me sitting in that meeting room in Tuscaloosa in 1990, he walks in there with his cowboy boots on and his, you know, he was always dressed to the nines and. and uh, if you'd have told me that me and him was fixing to go on a 32-year journey, I would have, there's no way, you know, there's no way. Uh, no, especially after that spring game uh, that I didn't get in. Not one snap. Unbelievable. So 1990. Still mad? I still, <laughs> still mad about that. 1990 was a transfer portal, a sewer system under Tuscaloosa. Is that, is that how you transferred? The what? The sewer system <laughs> under Tuscaloosa. Bad joke. <laughs> transfer portal. Yeah, portal, yeah, sewer. yeah, yeah. That was transfer portal. Yeah, yeah. All right. Thank I you, Coach. Explain that one to you. <laughs>